Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me? I want to make myself far more available to my community. Actually, I, I need to make myself more available to my community. I have uh, an obligation to people who are taking a course of mine to be able to book some time with me for some consultation. Consequently, I need an online scheduling solution. So I spent the entire weekend looking at online tools for booking appointments. And I thought I would find one that I loved. I didn't. I looked at a whole whack of solutions. I think I looked at 12 solutions in total. <clears throat> and I found something wanting in each and every one of them. There was no one single perfect solution. I did finally come up with one that I am happy with, but not thrilled with, if that makes sense. Uh, cause it turns out that, uh, when it, the, these, all of these online solutions, uh, suffer from a little bit of a je ne sais suck. They all have something that bothers me about them. Uh, but they will do the job if you, if you take some time. Uh, so today we're going to take a look at choosing an online scheduling solution on Dottotech. <laughs> Now, I was perhaps a little bit overly harsh because I spent the entire weekend trying to figure out this solution because I, th I thought that I would find a online scheduling application that I loved. There's so many tools that I just really like out there that I, I really like the philosophy and the value, all of those sorts of things. And I did not hit on one that was an absolute home run. I hit on one that I think is probably the best overall solution in my particular case, uh, but they all left me wanting something more uh, from them. Um, so to, 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 to kind of create a frame of reference, what do we need in an online scheduling application? First and foremost, we need integration with our calendar. I use Google Calendar, you might use Outlook Calendar, but it has to integrate because if I create an appointment myself in my calendar, I wanna make sure that that's not available to somebody to double book my time. That's number one. Number two is it would be nice if it was integrated into my website so I could create a form that people can fill in on my website that allows people to book with me without ever leaving my website. That's number two. Number three is I would like them to be able to not just book an appointment, but instead to book just a request for an appointment so that I can verify whether or not I'm available or not. Number four, I'd like it to be a reasonable price. And uh, number five is it has to be, has to be, has to be robust. It has to work every time and be reliable. So that was where my journey began. Now, as a, to give you a little more frame of reference, uh, there was lots of different services out there that I dismissed fairly early on just because of the price. And uh, this one here, I love the name Schedulista or Schedulista, is it Shed or Sched? How do you say it? Uh, but it looks nice, they got a great looking website, but $20 a month for single purpose. And and then they always have less features available uh, in, their, in their single user thing. So I, I, at suddenly $240 a year, it seems to me to be a lot of money to spend for something. Now, if you are, a person who is a salesperson or you're you know you're booking dozens and dozens of meetings and it's all cold calls and all booking meetings if you're if you live by that kind of a uh, if you live that sort of a lifestyle or a business style uh, then spending more on an application might well be worth it but I personally only need this occasionally as do I imagine the rest of you is it's not something that we use each and every day but it's something that we use as a convenience from time to time and so consequently committing to $240 a year or or so for a service that we, that is that uh, that is available elsewhere for less money uh, it seems to be a little bit excessive so the ones the three that kind of came down as my finalists were in no particular order schedule once which I've looked at before on this channel quite like it it's a great product very busy website great product number two was time trade online scheduling probably the uh, biggest one of the bigger players in the space and the, the third one was I just really like this application it's beautiful simple it's called candidly calendly uh, and it's a, it's a very nice service that some of my friends use uh, and I've tested out in the past quite like each one 
was missing something. They didn't quite do everything for me. Uh, so there was going to be a compromise no matter what. Uh, the problem with Schedule 1, as far as I was concerned, or Schedule once, excuse me, it came down to the pricing. They, they, they have integration with almost everything, including Infusionsoft, which is nice. But the Infusionsoft integration uh, came at a very steep price on top of the membership pricing. So we, we are looking, you know, kind of their basic service at $5 a month is, is pretty reasonable. That's a great price. Uh, but most people are going to want the premium at $10 a month. Uh, and then when we really look at it, the $20 a month plan is really what's required. Because here's the thing. Uh, for the basic one, you get Google Calendar integration, which is great. You get booking with approval, which is great. That means that somebody has to, that, that when somebody goes to schedule a booking with me, that I can verify it rather than they can straight up book it. So I love that. And that's available in the basic package. So the basic package, I don't like how their site pops this stuff up. So their basic package really works well from that perspective. Uh, but then uh, they don't allow automatic booking. Uh, Outlook calendar integration costs extra. And down here, website integration costs extra. So it doesn't quite do everything at $5. So we got to go to the $9 a month and that doesn't still do the website integration. So in order to have it on my website and not just have a link that takes them to their website, $20 a month. It's getting a little bit rich. If they had the website integration or some way of doing it at the $5 a month or even the $10 a month, this one here would probably be the winner as far as I was concerned. But it's not because of those costs. So we go to Calendly, which is the right price. Calendly has a wonderful price of eight and ten eight dollars a month. That's about a hundred dollars if you pay in advance. It does everything we need except again website integration. There's no way to integrate it in the website. You have to go to their site, which I just didn't like. I I, I really want to find a solution that will allow me to stay on our site. So the winner for me, and, and Calendly, by the way, if you if you if it's not a big deal to keep people on your site, I would take a good hard look at Calendly. It was one of the nicer interfaces of all. It does allow you to uh, have requests for meetings rather than straight up book meetings. Uh, it's a it, it seems to be a very good product that a lot of my friends, uh, colleagues that I uh, work with, quite like. The one that I chose and the one that I'm working with right now is Time Trade. Now, Time Trade is really a, a suite of tools. It's not just for the individuals and this sort of thing, but it works its way all the way through. It's got dental and medical applications. It's got, uh, you know, for heavy bookings, for heavy online booking users as well. So they've got a very robust back end for their system. And I, I should tell you, from my experience, very good online support because I did have a little issue and their online support people were in very quickly for me. So, so props to them for that. Uh, if we take a look at the pricing, it was very appealing because the basic, the, the, uh, the basic professional service, which is what I, I, I need is $49 a year. So $50 a year. That to me seems to be a reasonable exchange for what we're getting. And what are we getting for that? Well, let me walk you through what they give. Now, as I said, I wasn't a hundred percent happy because the one thing that I don't get from time trade is the ability for the meetings to be a request for a meeting from me. It's a, it's a firm booking when it comes to me. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the one thing I gave up, but I did get all of the other things that I was looking for with time trade, nice integration with Google or outlook calendar, uh, and a, and a good interface to work with. So how time trade basically works is we work based on activities. You create your activities. And in my particular case, what I need this for is to set up these coaching calls to students of mine. I've got uh, about a hundred students that need to, that need to book some time with me over the next couple of months. Uh, so rather than do that all manually, an online system is what I'm going to require. So I set up the screencasting coaching call as an event and you can go in and you can tell them, you can give them specifics, you can ask them questions that they have to fill in before they complete their booking so that you have some background information. I'll show you all that when we walk through the actual booking process. But the most important thing as far as, the, as far as we're concerned right now is how do you manage your availability? See, all of these systems have to do two things. They have to allow you to create availability on the software side. So you're telling what you're available for, for different events. And then on your calendar side, it has to then work with your calendar to parse out any events that you already have booked, anything that, that would get in the way of one of your kind of mass bookings that are available on your side. If you have a dentist appointment that you don't want to be available for a consultation at that particular time. The other thing that a lot of these software applications will 
will do is tie in to your payment gateway system. If you're charging people for consultation, then you're going to want it. That's going to be another feature that you're going to want to have included. And especially like Schedule Once has got really nice integration with payment systems, but they all will integrate in some way with your payment systems, providing you're in you know one of the mainstream ones, such as PayPal or Stripe or something along that line. Having said all of that, this is the interface that you now go into once you're set up. You sync it to your calendar, which I won't walk you through right now, but it's a straightforward integration to Google Calendar or to Outlook Calendar. Once it's integrated with the calendar, then you go through and you set your kind of global availability. So these, this is the availability that I'm giving my students. And all that I do, if I want to add some time, is I just click and I drag, and that creates an option for people to be able to book you within that time. And so we've got this availability set up. Once you've done that, you click on finish and it's all set up for you and ready to go. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned that there is website integration with, uh, with, with the time text. It's not, it's not a, it's not an embed code as we would, uh, where we can actually put the form right in our website, but let me show you what it looks like. I actually have it already embedded here because I want to walk you through now what the person booking goes through and then see how it all interfaces. So this is what I created here. So this is actually the course page for our screencasting course. And right here is the widget that I embedded in the website. <clears throat> which interfaces with time text. And this is how they work, is they work with these widgets. When I click on that, up comes, a, first of all, a, a welcome message to telling people what to expect. They click on continue, and it then launches the calendar side of the application, the booking side of the application. And what it does is it looks first and foremost at my Google Calendar, determines what availability I have on the calendar, and then it looks at its own availability that I've determined when I'm available for these accounts or for these meetings, and then it combines those two to create my availability. So if I wanted to book something on, say, Friday morning, the 15th, I could book a 9, a 10.30 appointment with me, and then if so, if I'm the person that's booking, they click continue, and then you enter your information, test info, so that I can, there it is, email is info at, so you enter all of your information, the phone number, and the company information, yada, yada. And now, uh, these are questions which I determined. Please provide your Skype address, your YouTube, and web URL. So I ask people to give me this information so that I'm able to then uh, preview their website before I have the meeting. So the, you can ask any number of questions here and then have them fill it in. Once it's all done, they click continue, and they, once they go over the information, they can confirm the appointment. When the appointment's confirmed, then a whole series of actions happen. First of all, it's placed on my Google Calendar, emails are sent back and forth and confirmations are made. So here we have the appointments confirmed. If I go to my Google Calendar now, I should, if I, there it is right there, is the test info. So there is all of the information already published to my Google Calendar, including all of the information that they created in that they created in the fields that I when I where I asked them the question. So I have all the background information in this calendar itself. So that's number one. Uh, we've created the calendar appointment and we're ready to go. Now what happens though if I have an appointment that I want to block off some time myself in, in time that is demarked as available. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just go right here and right after this appointment here is over, I'm gonna create something new. Something new and I'm gonna create the event, and I'm just gonna move it down so that's there it is, so it starts right after, there it is. So that should now block off some time on the calendar. So if we go back, if I sync it, just save it to the web, if I go back now, and I start the whole process over again, I go and I create a new, so I'm another person visiting now, I create new, I should see that I have less availability. Those two spots should have been taken away. Yes, indeed. And so those spots have been removed from the inventory available to me. This is crucial. This is something you have to test and make sure is working in your system because you don't want people double booking. You don't want to end up with, with, with customers or with clients upset and with your basically messing up everybody's schedule because you trust the system 
and it fails you. This to me is the heart of a system that has to be working. The integration with your calendar has to be flawless. And in this particular case, it's working quite well. Uh, I tested it and I actually had some issues right at the beginning, but the technical support people walked me through it. I, we don't really still know why, why, it, why it didn't do it initially uh, quite properly. It did it for a period of time, and then it stopped. I think it was a Google issue. I think it's something you just had to wait a little bit of time to make it work, but it did allow me to test out time trades tech uh, customer support people and they were very quick to get back to me which is I think essential for a service like this that you could end up relying on. Bottom line is none of these services are perfect. Find one that works for you that fits in your budget and then has the features determine which features are the ones that you absolutely have to have. Uh, you can see oh by the way the the the, the, the widget keeps people right within my website environment. It doesn't actually embed in my website where they're actually on one of my web pages, which is actually in a way better for me because there's less things to break, but it does sit on top. And so when, as soon as they close it down, they're still in my website environment. So it meets most of my criteria. The only one it didn't meet was the fact that I had to, that I can't confirm an appointment. Now what will have to happen is if I have to make a change is I have to reach back out to the people through the, I can do it just through my calendar interface though and make a change and they will be notified of that change. Uh, so overall, it's certainly a worthwhile project to, to, to get going on and to add to your website or add, to add to your communications toolkit. Uh, but just be prepared to be somewhat disappointed. Now, I hope that you weren't disappointed with this video and that you learned a lot and the content was valuable. There are three ways to stay in touch with us here on Dottotech. The first is subscribe to our channel. Second is please subscribe to our newsletter and learn about all of our upcoming live events. And finally, Dottotech is a community funded site supported through the crowdfunding platform Patreon. Drop by the Patreon page, have a look. There are perks and the perks are awesome. That is it. As you can tell, I have a heavy schedule ahead of me. Till next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.